I want you to ask for the Holy Spirit to minister to you this morning by His Word to speak to you. Somebody ask for the help of the Holy Ghost. Tell the Holy Spirit, let this morning be my morning. Let this service be my service of encounter. Lift up your voice and ask Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Sweet Holy Spirit, I ask that you have your way in this service. I ask for your help to deliver and to receive. Holy Spirit, I ask for the spirit of understanding. I ask for the spirit of revelation. Let this word be a transforming word. Lord, cause a change in all areas of our lives. In Jesus' precious name. Let's wave those hands to God in worship of the Lord. Let us wave those hands in worship. Lift up those hands and just worship the name of the Lord. Go ahead and worship him. Turn it to a worship between you and the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. We may be saved. You are welcome this morning in the precious name of Jesus Christ. This month, we started looking at the subject of the Holy Ghost, as you can see from our prophetic guide. And I said, I want to say again, when you know the value in a thing, when you know what you stand to gain, when you start to benefit, that will stay your hunger or your test. You cannot be tested for something whose value you don't know. That is why we have been looking into the person of the Holy Ghost and the benefit that is in there. Most of the time, we focus on the gift and the powers. But there are some other things that are needed or required to operate the gift or the power. So this morning, I'm going to teach by the grace of the Almighty God. I'm going to be ministering on the fruit of the Holy Spirit the fruits. You can also put in parentheses the benefits, what I stand to gain, what I stand to benefit from the Holy Spirit. Don't forget that uh, we were who we were before we gave our life to Jesus. We were far away from him in all ramifications. So, but when we give our life to Jesus, but we say, if anyone be in Christ, it's a new creation. All things are passed away. So now, we are now a new creation, but we need the help of the Holy Ghost to live as a new creation. In John chapter 14, verse 15, it says, if you love me, keep my commandment, and I'll pray the Father. He will, verse 16, give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. So the Holy Spirit is not the spirit of the world. So that's why it shouldn't be surprising when unbelievers do certain things. But what is surprising is when believers are supposed to be filled with the Holy Ghost behave like somebody that is filled with the spirit of the devil. So it says, the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. 
I will not leave you as orphans, as fatherless or parentless. I will come to you. Fruit of the Holy Spirit. Let me start from Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19. The works of the flesh that you saw that was, that is, that prevails. Now the works of the flesh are heavy things, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So I want to start by pointing something out to us this morning. There is no bigger sin. There is no smaller one. We find out from these scriptures that those in adultery and fornication will end up in the same place with those with outbursts of wrath. Oh, I'm just mad. Envy. We also end up in the same place. Envy. Heresies. Idolatry. Sorcery. Hatred. You just see someone, you just dislike the person. You are not any different from somebody worshiping idols or an adulterer or any of these things. Or you are not different from a sorcerer. Hatred. Now it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. It means there is no conflict with the law. So when you have all these things, manifest all these things, you produce the fruit of the Spirit, there is no law. It means there is no charge against you. Now, I want to pay our attention to something here. It says, now the works of the flesh, works, plural. Now it says, the fruit of the Spirit, singular. Are you following us this morning? Plural means multiple. Singular means one. So it means there are many more works. Works. And that is why it requires a lot of work to do all those things. It requires some deliberate effort. That's what it is. The fruit of the Spirit is singular. Why? Because it does not allow pick and choose. So you can say, in the fruit of the Spirit, I have this one, I don't have that. You miss one, you miss all. Fruit of the Spirit. So you can say, out of the nine fruit of the Spirit, at least I check seven. I check five. You miss one out of the nine, you miss all. Fruit of the Spirit. Is somebody following me this morning? Fruit of the Spirit. So the challenge that we have as Christians is pick and choose. We embellish the one we think we are doing right on, and we belittle silence on the ones we know we have weakness. Fruit of the Spirit. We are looking at what we stand to gain with the, uh, the help of the Holy Ghost. One of my pastor proteges wrote something recently. He said he was in the midst of pastors when a question came up, and he says, as a pastor, as a Christian, what will you do 
if an homosexual or a known prostitute joins the church, what will you do? Of course, he said most people give traditional answer, oh no, he doesn't belong here. Oh no, if he comes, he will pollute the others. That's how we reason. So that was the general consensus, according to him. They will contaminate the others. But this is the truth. Homosexuals are number five in the works of the flesh. It's not even number one, number two, number three. The Bible makes it clear, liars, haters, people with elbows of hangers, they are all in the same category. So should we say because it's out of emotion, you're always outbursting, you're almost exploding, hunger, hunger, hunger. But from scriptures, you are not any different from an homosexual. You are not any different from an adulterer. Is somebody following me this morning? And this is the truth. The hypocrite makes the most noise. Because they behave like the Pharisee, the spirit of the Pharisee, like they are the custodian of the law. They are silence on their weakness. How do you know an hypocrite? If this morning I asked, we're talking about the fruit of the spirit, all of a sudden your mind has started extraining some people. Your mind started saying, okay, this person, this person, you're an hypocrite. That's just the manifestation of it. That's hypocrisy. Because the word of God is for everybody. Because from scripture, the homosexual, the liars, the adulterer, fornicators, haters, outbursts of hunger, <laughs> they belong to the same category, the same hell. The book of Revelation said they will head up in the same lake of fire. And that's why the Pharisees are always quoting the laws. We see have that in the body of Christ today. Now, the purpose of this message is not to personally convict anybody. It's for everybody to see themselves. To find out where do I need to improve. Then, what do I stand to gain by the help of the Holy Spirit? Salvation is a personal responsibility. That is why no matter how close husband and wife he is, wife can't go to heaven grandfathered by the righteousness of the husband and vice versa. No parent can carry their children to heaven. Now on the basis of your parents' work with God, you will make it to heaven. It's a personal responsibility. The Pharisees, they're always using the law. They behave like the custodian of the law. We see our people in the church. We say, watch that person, watch that person. Some years ago when we were in Oakland, one boy was in our church then, and he had gotten somebody pregnant in another church. The boy was not even in our church when it happened. But why did, it was this controversy that the lady actually in another church brought, reported, him, reported the issue to me because I know the lady. So I invited him. So this boy started coming to church. And one day after service, I was leaving church at the hallway. I, I held the boy's hand like this. I was talking to him. I held him like this. One man left the church because of that one. He said, that person that got somebody pregnant, I held him. <laughs> one old man. He got really mad. I'm, I'm telling you, people of God. He got really, really mad with me. He said, did I know what this guy did? He said, I held him publicly. You know why I said hypocrites are most critical? And when God will expose him, he got into an issue. He's a very old man. He got into an issue that I have to talk to the children. When, now, he wanted me to talk to his children to help him make peace with him, with them. When I called the children, when the children started talking, he asked me to end the meeting. He said I should leave him alone. Because was there, I found out he had been married three or four times not accepting responsibility for one. 
in Matthew chapter 12, in verse 9. Now, when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man who had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, the Pharisees? Now, could you heal wrongly at any time? Could you, is there any time wrong to do good? That they might accuse him. Then he said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep? And he falls into a pit on the Sabbath. Will not lay hold of it and lift it out. So is your animal, if he fell into a pit, will you catch, catch it on the Sabbath? Now to heal a man, it was wrong. Of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Jesus answered the question. Therefore, is it, lawful? it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand, my friend. I mean, he healed the man. Then the Pharisee went out and plotted against him, how looking for another way to destroy him. So Pharisees are hypocrites. It is still the spirit of Pharisee that makes Christians behave hypocritically today in the body of Christ. Because they announce what they see in others and are silent on the things around them. They behave like watchmen, watchwomen, custodian of the law. Know what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 1, judge not that you not be judged. For with judgment you judge, you will be judged. But that's not where I'm going. Verse 3 say, And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eyes, but do not consider the plank in your eye? Or how can you say to a brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. So it's a personal responsibility. You look at yourself. You can't claim to love somebody more than you love yourself. So where I'm showing them in love, show yourself love. So the fruit of the Spirit is singular because it is the one fruit but all apply. So you fail in one, you have failed in all. What is a fruit? A fruit is a harvest or something that is produced. So the fruit of the Spirit means an harvest or a produce or a product or of the Spirit or a character that is produced by the Holy Spirit. Somebody follow me this morning. A character produced by the Holy Spirit. So the fruit of the Spirit is the real uh, authentication of spirituality. And you can't have the fruit without having the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the ministry of the Holy Ghost. So you convert any of these fruits... You have to have the Holy Spirit. So there's nothing to say Pentecostal or non-Pentecostal. If you don't believe in the Holy Ghost, you are saying, yeah, you, just, you, you become a symbol of Christianity. Because it is impossible to have the fruit without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the fruits are not hidden. Fruit, a fruit is evident. What is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? It is the character of Jesus Christ that is produced by the Holy Spirit in the believer. The character. The character of Jesus Christ produced by the Holy Spirit in the believer. Is the authentic proof that Christ lives in you. The only way to authenticate that Christ lives in you is in your character. Not in how churchy we appear. Not in how Christianly we talk. Not in the multitude of saying, uh, telling story of when, how long you have been saved. The only way to authenticate that Christ lives in you is the character. The character, the fruit of the Spirit. It's good to worship God, to go to church. That's necessary. Going to church is necessary, it's required, it's needed. Praying is good, worshiping is good. 
faithfulness and tithing and offering is required. But none of these is a proof that Christ lives in you. None of these validates that Christ lives in you. So the fruit of the Spirit is godly character revealed in us. Is somebody following me this morning? In Revelation chapter 21 from verse 5, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am half, I'm the half and the omega, the beginning and the end. I will give I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who test. He who overcome shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly. Now, Revelation has said to be cowardly in the faith is also a sin. <laughs> to be cowardly, to be unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All liars, unbelieving. So we realize how much we need the Holy Ghost. Paul also wrote that the drunkards drinking that we say, oh, it's just socializing. Paul said, you are going to hell. The thief, the swindlers, greedy, he said greed. Cheaters, cheating on anything, time clock, money, So the fruit of the Spirit is the character of Christ produced by the Holy Spirit. Like I said, speaking in tongues is the evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost. So you can be speaking in tongues every service, every time, and don't have the fruit. So meanwhile, it's the fruit that authenticates that Christ really lives in you. It is not a natural thing, it's something in your spirit. It's not what you can fake. You can't patch it up. It's in your spirit. You either allow him or not. You can fake the gift. You can speak in tongues and miss nothing. Nobody knows. Except those with the center of the spirit. But you cannot fake the fruits. You cannot fake the fruit. Plan to fake it, it won't last. Without true encounter with the Holy Ghost, you say today, I am going to be gentle. I am going to know. I am going to manifest the fruits. You will have exploded before you find out that uh, you exploded. So there is no shortcut. It has, there has to be a real experience. You have to let it be real. The hunger has to be real. The test has to be real. Is somebody following me? Talking about hypocritical nature of people. Sometimes in Atlanta, Georgia, we were in the Bible class. One lady asked me, that's a question. I just finished speaking about the Holy Ghost. Then she said, okay, how do I know that the person sitting there to me is speaking real tongues? What's your business? I said, in, in all these things, that's all you, you gain. That's all that matters to you. You are not even filled with the Holy Ghost. But of course, I, I said it openly also because she asked me openly. So now, then we also know that 
fruits have stages, ripe and unripe. Also, let's remember that fruit is what separates us from unbelievers. So we manifest the fruit at every stage, everywhere. Not only in our house, in the public, every space. If it is real, if it is who we are. So if you are gentle at church or you are gentle at work, but you manifest it at home, it's not there. Or you are gentle outside, you manifest it with your spouse, with your children, it's not there. You know, I remember, and, and you as a Christian, because we live in the real world, you are going to have a lot of opportunities where your fruit will be tested. I remember something happened at the airport in Lagos, sometimes, maybe last year or something. I was at the gate. At the gate to board a plane, but we stay at some time. And I saw an empty seat. There was this lady and her child. I saw an empty seat. I saw a bag. Nobody was around. So I sat on the empty seat. About five minutes after, one guy came and told me, he said, that seat was his seat. That I should stand up. I look at him. I stood up. Then I stayed somewhere. Then after about 10 minutes of me standing, then he called me. He said, do you want to sit? <laughs> I said, why are you asking? He said, I can remove this bag so that I can sit it. So he owned the bag. So he occupied one seat with the bag. He, one was empty. Then he got me out of that one. So I look at it. I said, no, I'm not sitting. Then I stood. Then I started, I started, then I told myself, <laughs> I was an Ajegunle boy. <laughs> I told myself, I said, now I know why we need the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Otherwise, 20 of him would not move me out of that seat. And I look at him, I could slap him and get him arrested. That's the truth. I know buttons to press right there. I could make him miss his flight. I could pay for somebody to take him away and the flight is gone. I kept quiet. And I meditated over this for a long time. Without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to manifest the fruits. One day I was, I was, this was also in Lagos. Two pastors were with me. Two pastors were in the car. And one car eat our car. And in the course of this, they, all of them came out. I didn't come out of the car. They came out. And the two pastors were fighting the other driver with our driver fighting one person. I started begging them. I started calling them, let's go. No, he wants to run away. Oh, he damaged our car. There is a day. I should come and say, I say I'm not saying. Let's go. I begged them. So I, I called the driver. I said, if you don't enter, you are fired. If you don't enter, take me back home. Not working with me again. So the driver entered. When the driver entered, they now enter. So when they enter, I said, both of you are pastors. If any of your member sees you right on the traffic, doing like this, fighting like this, would they know, it would leap out to them who was wrong, who was right. And they kept quiet. <laughs> they didn't talk for a long time. The fruit of the Spirit will, your, 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 your fruit of the Spirit will be tested. Because we're really in the real world. Now, in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15, Jesus was speaking, say, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn brushes or figs from tittles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. 
a good tree cannot be a bad fruit, nor can a bad tree be a good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is called down. Now, this does not apply to prophets or pastors only, because in Mark chapter 13 and verse 37, Jesus says, he said, and what I say to you, I say to all. So, if you manifest anything other than the fruit, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. A bad tree does not have the DNA of good fruit. Say so what I say to you, I say to all. Mark 13 and verse 37. It means it applies to everybody. Why? John 15 and 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So now how do you re regulate yourself? Every behavior, every manifestation, you ask yourself, can, is this from Jesus or from the devil? Can Jesus do this? Can Jesus fight? Can Jesus shout? Can Jesus gossip or backbite? Can Jesus bring somebody down? He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. So anything other than the fruit of the Spirit that a Christian manifests, Jesus has not been the vine of that person. Or that person has not been his branch. What, the vine is the stem of a tree. The branch is the believer. So Jesus is the stem. We are the, believe, we are, we are the, we are the branches. So when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit, you cannot pick and choose. And you cannot bear the fruit of the Spirit by human work or effort. It requires so total submission to the Holy Ghost. Many a times, they will cheat you. If you don't want to be cheated, they will take you out of the fruit of the Spirit. If you don't want to be maligned, you have to respond to everything that comes. But in responding, you will have moved out of the fruit of the Spirit to the works of the flesh. Is somebody following me? And don't forget, a tree can bear ripe and unripe fruits. So there are times it's ripe, there are times that it's not, it's not. So the more of the Holy Spirit, the more ripen the fruit you bear. Now, what is unripe fruit of the Spirit? What does it do? That is when you have people with good intention. The fruit is there, but it's just not good for nothing. So they have good hearts, but they do insensitive, foolish things. They do things like as if their heart is not good. The fruit is the heart, is there. It's just not ripe. They have not allowed the Holy Ghost to take total control of their lives. In Luke chapter 15 from verse 1, Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, the man received, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, or he lays it on his shoulders... He lays it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. I said to you that, I said to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who will repent than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. So what does that mean? The only way, to, somebody asked me a question recently and said, how do you cope when you know somebody is doing so much damage, so much things, and you smile, and you act as if nothing is happening? Somebody asked me that question, I think, about two weeks ago. 
How do you, how are you able to contain it? When you say somebody is doing it, somebody is doing it, and I know that you know, and you act as if you don't know, and you are still smiling with the person. There is no hope of gaining that person or influencing that person if you judge or if you run away. While some people you may never be able to win, you also don't want them to make you manifest the works of the flesh. There is somebody that has direct, that done so much havoc in my family. For many years, I give her money every month. Every month. And I act as if I don't know. And she knows that I know because she's trying to defend those things. And I said, oh, no, 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 no big deal. Past is past. No, we are Christian anyway. She said, God bless you. So now, what is the importance of allowing the fruit to grow? The fruit, the gift, sorry. The gift of God in you, all the gift of the Spirit, we're going to go into them again. All those gifts will have no impact in life. They will never find an expression if you, allow, if you don't allow the fruit to ripe. The gift will be nothing. You will speak with the Holy Ghost, you do nothing. The gift will miss nothing. Your anointing will not kill a mosquito. You say one million things, none of them will come to pass. The gift will not find an expression in life until you allow the fruits to grow or to ripe. You will never experience the power in it or the usefulness of the gift. You create the gift of power, the gift of power in you will be powerless. If you don't allow it to grow. You know, I, I think I said it on Friday, a couple of days ago, just in the middle of the night, Papa called me. He, 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 he was talking. So in the course of that conversation, he said something. So he, he was telling me about stuff, his life, you know, his 50th birthday is coming. He said something, he said, jealously guard divine presence. Don't allow bitterness or unforgiving spirit to take you away from divine presence. So what Christians don't know is that in the name of I'm fighting, I'm retaliating, he's doing something, you are moving away from divine presence. Bitterness. Many people will never experience God because of bitterness. They will never experience what we call the power of God. They will never experience it. Forget about the tongues. The tongues doesn't mean power. And he was saying this to me, and I was writing down. He said, when you jealously guard divine presence, you will never experience lack of energy. And he was talking to me, he was saying, this is how he got here. He said, Shekman, he said look at me. He said, my passion has never diminished. He said the same passion I had the day I gave my life to Christ, I still have that passion till today. And it's obvious. He said, you guard divine presence. The gift will not find an expression in your life until you allow the fruit to grow or to ripe. When we don't have 
when we have the gift and we don't have the fruit, this is who we are. When we have some gift, bear no fruit. First Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have no love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging symbol. Although I have the gift of prophecy, I understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but I have no love, I am nothing. I give all my goods to the poor. I am a giver, I am this, I am dedicated to those things. I don't miss nothing, I don't miss everything. I amounts to nothing. What does that mean? Gift without fruit makes you a noise maker. You are making a lot of noise, but you are not producing a sound. A lot of activities, a lot of motions, but no movement. Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no conflict with the law. Fruit of the Spirit, love, joy. That you have a reason to be unhappy, it means you don't have the Spirit of joy, because the Spirit of joy will extinguish your reason to be unhappy. If you have Somebody follow me. Glory be to God's name. Peace. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you will be at peace. Because he's the Prince of Peace. Kindness. Kindness. Can't you just know, don't you just know how to show love to people? You only show love to your family alone. That's selfishness. That's self-centeredness. Goodness. Faithfulness. So what you show here is what you had there. Not double-faced. Gentleness. Self-control. Both the gift and the fruit have dropped from the Holy Spirit. So you can't have the fruit without the gift. You can't have the gift without the Holy Ghost. So the question for us this morning is this. In all the fruits, because we know we always pray for the gift, right? We like the gift. In all the fruits, where am I lacking? Stop celebrating what you have. Otherwise, you won't have what you don't have. Stop focusing on what you have. Where am I lacking? Meditate through that one with God's word. Before I close, how do we cultivate the fruits? How do we cultivate the fruit? Because we are talking about fruit. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 6, the Bible says the hard-working farmer must be forced to partake of the crops. The hard-working farmer. So it means it requires some work. And cultivation requires some working. Cultivating the fruit requires some deliberate commitment to hard work. Number one, study God's word. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You study God's word. You are not ready to study. You are not ready to develop the fruit. That's the truth. And it's a work. That's why I call it a work. It is a work to read. I wish you can become anything you want to become without reading. Number two. Spend time in prayer. But hold on. I'm going to explain it to you. When you want to spend time in prayer to develop the fruit of the Spirit, it's not the same thing as praying for needs. It's more than the time you pray, you have 20 outlines. 
It is, ta- it is prayer, spending time with God in prayer and listen to what he has to say. All what we know mostly for prayer is to just tell God what we need. But there's another level of prayer to develop the fruit of the Spirit. To make them ripe, it is spending time in prayer and mostly listening to what he has to say. Meditating through God's word. Comparing spiritual with spiritual. That is when you have real encounter in God's word, people of God. That's how to have an encounter God in his word. So spend time in prayer to listen to him. In John chapter 5 and verse 30, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous. Because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Now, Jesus was always running away to pray. Always running away to pray. Always running away to pray. Always separating himself to pray. Go to the other side of the river. Run to the bush to pray. Was he praying for promotion at work? Was he praying for job? Was he praying to remove workplace opposition? Was he praying against witches and wizards? To break generational causes? No. All those times. The Bible said that was time he prayed, pray, pray. He became, he, his, his face began to show like glass. The glory of God began to reveal. He prayed, he prayed, he became transformed. Why? He was praying to hear from him. I can of myself do nothing. I can of myself do nothing. You will never grow or develop as a Christian if you don't have a me alone time with God. Some of us never had. You will, there is no way to grow. There is no way to change levels spiritually without separating yourself. You alone with God. All of us, everything we know about separation and prayer is 1,000 prayer points. That's not what I'm talking about this morning. I'm talking about prayer to grow. Prayer of fellowship. Prayer to hear what God has to say. Jesus spent a lot of time with God in prayer. They will run away. They'll be looking for him. Number three, cultivate the lifestyle of fellowshipping with other believers. Don't try to live the Christian life in isolation. Spending time with only your family member is still isolation, no matter their numbers. And when I say spend time, not the fact that, oh, 100 Christians gather for a party. That's not the time we're talking about. You gather for the purpose of sharing the gospel among yourself. You are talking about Jesus. You are talking about God's word. You are talking about revelation. This is what I read. This is what he says to me. What does it mean to you? Ask a question. Hebrews 10 and 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. To stir good works up, we need to consider one another. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. But exhorting one another. So that assembly is for exhortation. So 100 Christians gathering, having a party is not fellowshipping. And so much the more as you see they are approaching. Number four, I'm talking about how to cultivate the fruit. How to cultivate the fruit because it requires sacrifice. This submit to a life of discipline. And I want to listen to this. The first discipline to submit to is your own discipline. Self-control and self-discipline. What is self-discipline? It's the order you create in your life. The plan for you to live. If you don't have an order, you can't grow the fruit. 
If you don't have the time you sleep, you don't have the time you wake up, you don't have the time you study, you just watch TV, watch TV on social media and sleep when sleep comes, you will never grow in the fruits. It will never happen. So the first discipline is the discipline, the order you create for yourself. What you should do, what you shouldn't do, what to wear, what, how not to dress, event to attend and event not to attend. How to, I even read from scripture early this morning. How to celebrate when you have an allocation, when you have a party. There, there is a level of celebration, a party you hold that is too far that you have crossed the line. And the second discipline is group discipline. Especially in the church. What does that mean? Having respect for fellow Christians, fellow members, and respect for leaders and people in authority. Respecting rules and conduct. The reason why we behave out of order in the church is a lack of the fruits. That's why we insult, we behave unruly. Now, rules that Christians obey, how dare they question it in the church? So who said that? Why? That's when the age of the head of the department now matters. You have to create, you have to submit to discipline. It's, the, it's lack of the fruit of the spirit that makes us do all these foolish things. Church is not a place where you, where you practice arrogance. Things you can't do out there, out there. If you go to DMV, you can use your phone. Many people will be all those things. The, there are people that, the only time their phone won't ring is because a call doesn't come in. They forget all the time. I understand why you forget one time. But when you forget multiple times, it means you have no regard, no order for the house of God. That's what it is. You have no order for the authority. People in the department, they do what they like. They do what they want to like. No, no here of submission to the leader. It's lack of the work of the Holy Spirit. That is the truth. That's what is missing. That is what it is. Rule that you obey elsewhere, you question it at church. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14. These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. Paul was writing to Timothy. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. And he says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. So, to conduct yourself the right way in the house of God, he calls it godliness. You have to submit to discipline. Rise to your feet. So, if you think this morning you need the help of the Holy Spirit, why not? The Bible calls him our helper. So in every area that you think you need his help, lift up your hands between you and God and ask for his help. It's between you and him. What I say to you, I say to all. Glory be to God's name. Ask for the gift and ask for the fruits. Ask for the gift and ask for the fruits. Ask for the gift as well as the fruits. The fruit cannot be faked. 
If you try it, it wouldn't one last. So you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need the gift. Then you need the fruit consciously. Come on, open your mouth and ask the Lord. Has Jesus. Has Jesus. God bless you, Stephen. Come on, go ahead. Oh, everyone who tells, come ye to the waters. Oh, everyone who tells, come ye to the waters. If you are thirsty for the gift, for the, for the Holy Spirit, ask him, express it before him this morning. The fruit, the fruit, the fruit, the fruit. The fruit, the fruit, the fruit, the fruit. The fruit, 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 the fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Open your mouth and ask Jesus. 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 you have the more hungry you are because you know there is more to have you know God I believe God has something to do God wants about to do something our midst the Holy Ghost said to me to tell you this morning please believe God for a definite miracle this month this, break, this month's breakthrough service will be like no other one. Because we are going to see manifestations of God's power. Tangibly. We are going to see miracles. Testimonies will come out. 
So we have time to prepare ourselves before the Lord. The fruit, the fruit, the fruit, the fruit, the fruit, the fruit. Come on. Let me say contentions, contentions, always combating, always fighting, always arguing is going to hell like a sorcerer. Let's take this song. More love, more power. Into that song. Glory be to God's name. More love, oh, more power. of whatever, how you feel. You are out of alignment with the fruit of the Spirit. That's what it is. So it's beyond how you feel. It's beyond how you feel. You can be a fighter. It takes effort to hit somebody. It takes effort to slap somebody. It takes effort to shout. It takes effort to be contentious. It takes effort. It takes effort. So it requires submission and true encounter with the Holy Ghost and a decision and a choice. If the Bible says to have hunger, in the same thing as a sorcerer, in the same place as a fornicator. Then what are we talking about? Anger. One person misbehaved not too long ago, and, and, and I was broken in the peace, and he was telling me. And these guys were always explode, always explode. And what he has to say, he said that, well, my wife uh, doesn't respect me. So I don't like anybody shouting me down because she shouts me down every now and then. 
And that's my weakness. I said, your weakness will kill you. That thing you say lightly will kill you. I said, but by the way, everything you have said now she does is a reaction to what you have done. You are not responsible. You are, I told him, I said, you are not responsible. She only reacted. I didn't agree to her reacting. She also have to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. But don't put it on her. It takes two to fight. If somebody fights with you and you run away, I say, I'm sorry, you run away. That person will look mad. It takes two to fight. I told him, I said, your hunger will kill you. That thing you call your weakness will kill you. He said, it's my weakness. We are talking about it. How many years have you been talking about this now? I told him that, that was my first time of trying to broker peace between them. I said, how many times? You're almost 70 years old. You can't control your hunger. Foolishness. I said, the devil will destroy your life with the hunger. Haven't you read the scriptures? You know all the labors, all the things Moses did. Everything he did. Does it make sense to say he missed it because of my hunger? Because of the way they make me feel. That's what many of us said. They made me feel. They made me feel. So is, it what, is, is that not foolishness? With all the miracles he saw, the Bible called him the greatest prophet. The, the pastor of the largest congregation in the wilderness. Anger. It takes total submission to the Holy Ghost. So it's something you have to do consciously. You have to make up your mind from today. I will not manifest the spirit of the devil anywhere. Lift up those hands. Fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, blow your wind across this hall this morning. Receive a fresh, fresh wind of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. All hands lifted up, all eyes closed. Glory be to God's name. All eyes closed. Somebody is here this morning. You are considering suicide. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. All eyes closed. Somebody is here this morning. You are considering suicide. I'm not saying in the past. It's active right now. Come to the front. Come forward. You are tossing with it. Father, I rebuke the spirit of death. I rebuke every foul spirit. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Glory be to God. There is somebody here this morning. <laughs> Father, I rebuke the spirit of Sodom. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift those hands.
Father, give every man, every woman an encounter this morning. That they will never recover from, from the days of their lives. That person that I call, I know you are planning to see me. You don't need to see me, I've prayed. You don't need to see me. Let me tell you something about the Holy Ghost. He jump out right there. That's what it is. But in the precious name of Jesus, because I will not bury any one of you, that spirit is broken in the name of Jesus. Lift up those hands and wave unto Jesus. Please, I want you to prepare with me beyond our general prayer and fasting for breakthrough night coming next weekend. I want to prepare expecting a miracle. I want you to prepare that everything not of God, barrenness will be broken. Marital spell will be shattered. Poverty will be destroyed. Sickness will die. I want you to prepare your heart. Prepare yourself. Prepare your life for God. All hands lifted up. Fresh Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's wave those hands to God in worship. Are you blessed this morning? Are you blessed this morning? Come on, lift all those hands and just worship the name of the Lord for it. In Jesus' precious name, you may be seated. It is time to worship God with our offerings and our tithes. Let's worship God with our offerings and our tithes and all our giving responsibility. One of the things the Holy Spirit will help you do, it will help you to be faithful. Without the Holy Spirit, nobody wants to part with what they have. Without the Holy Spirit, no one submit nothing to not to anything. It takes the help of the Holy Ghost to be faithful in our giving. And we need to be faithful to be able to enter, to experience what we call open heavens. We need to be faithful to be able to shut out the devourers from our lives. So it's time for us to worship God with our offering, our tithe. Your tithe is a 10% of all income. Every time you get paid, non-faithfulness of tithing and giving is the absence of the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit have, have not convicted you. That is what it is. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. You are still overruling the Holy Spirit on that matter. That's what it is. So let's package our offering. You can give them on Zelle by sending to give at dominionlife.org or e-church at dominionlife.org or the phone number up there. We also have a Nigeria account, uh, if you have it, because we have some following in Nigeria. So it's a Zenith Bank. The account number is there. So let's package on our offering this morning. You want to give through an envelope. There are envelopes in the seat pocket in front of you, as well those in front row. Pick an envelope and package your offering. Glory be to God's name. Package your offering. And if you are giving an envelope, wave them onto the Lord so that the ushers can see you all just look left and right, front and back, and go and receive the offering. Hallelujah. All just go ahead and take all the offering. Glory be to God's name. Hallelujah. Why they are doing that, I want to remind us of our anniversary and our picnic the Saturday in between Friday. The anniversary events start. The Saturday morning will be picnic. Sunday will come back for the anniversary, grand finale. So I want us to prepare towards it. And if you have not given towards it, why not? Please sign up for something. Uh, whatever you are signing up can turn you to, it can make you broke. You just, just let's give generously. You give something. This sign-up sheet is out there. After the service, you can see some of the leaders that are uh, organizing this thing. 
and you can you can ask uh, if you have more questions. Glory be to God. Say, is anyone's birthday this week? If your birthday is this week, I want you to come forward. If your birthday is this week, glory be to God's name. If your birthday is this week, hallelujah. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory is the house name. If I miss it this week, I will not rest. If I miss it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Pastor Godwin is also coming. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God's name. In the precious name of Jesus. Let's stretch forth our hands towards God's wonderful people. Let us pray for the perfection of what the Lord is doing in their lives. Lift up your voice and pray in the precious name of Jesus. As your days be, so shall your strength be in the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray restoration. Restoration of strength, energy, and your vitality. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing is late for God. It is not too late to be restored. In the mighty name of Jesus. As your days be, so shall your strength be. Grow in grace. Grow in God's wisdom. Grow in God's favor. In the next one year, you all be running around like here over this pulpit in the name of Jesus. To the glory of God's name and to the shame of the devil. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and put your hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we stand on our feet, please, to do our declaration of faith? Read after me. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help. From whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. Who made heaven and the earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He who kiss me will not slumber. Behold, who who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade at my right hand. The sun shall not strike me by the day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil. He shall preserve my soul. The Lord shall preserve my going out and my coming in. From this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, please take your seat. If this is your first time here in, in the sanctuary, um, Domino Life, we'd like to welcome you. If there's anybody here in the service for the first time, can you please raise your hand and stand up? We want to welcome you. Anybody here for the first time? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have a sister over here. We have someone. Who, can you please stand up? Can you please stand up, please? Thank you. We have a gentleman over there. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Praise the Lord. Can you clap for Jesus? Amen. Amen. We thank you all for coming to um, Domino Life today. We know that God has brought you here. And we pray that you have been blessed today. And the blessing of God that has come upon you will remain with you forever in Jesus' mighty name. If you don't have a, a church home, this is a place to be. This is the home of breakthrough. And that breakthrough is coming to your life in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to know a little bit more about you and give you some information about the church. So please pack your belongings and follow the new member care team, member right next to you. And they will um, take you and, get, and just give you some information about Domino Life. Thank you again. Can we clap for them as they go? <laughs> Hallelujah. 
and it is your first time joining us online, we ask that you text the word GUEST, G-U-E-S-T, to the phone number 925-275-1600. Again, text that word GUEST, G-U-E-S-T, to 925-275-1600, and we will reach out to you. And remember to also share your testimonies. Hallelujah. Can we all rise up and give God all the glory for giving us a wonderful service? Begin to thank God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Magnify his name. Hallelujah. Let us bless his name. Thank him for his presence among us today, for the manifestation of his power, for the revelation of the word that came out to us, for showing us the deep mysteries of the gospel of Christ. Begin to thank him for the blessing that came upon us, for broken the yoke of death among us, Father, we say thank you, Lord God. King of kings, for breaking the hold of Satan upon our lives, Father, we say thank you. Thank you for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our life, for the gift that has been bestowed upon us, for the grace of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Father, we bless your holy name. Father, we magnify you. You alone are worthy to be praised, O Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for a glorious week among us, O Lord God. Father, thank you for the testimony that shall come upon our life for this week, O Lord God. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you for your protection upon us, upon our family members. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We give you all the glory 